This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Belfast here for the Frampton Reborn press conference, but also today announce Jamie Conlon will fight for his first world title uh, on the 18th of November. Jamie, you've been waiting for this for a long time. It's finally here. Yeah, it's here. Well, uh, never let myself get too excited about it. I kept my feet in the ground, but now I kind of... It's done. We're all, we're all here we're talking about it. We're allowed to speak about it now. I've known about it for a few weeks. And uh, now I can just get in the camp and just get down to work. You said, you know, in the press conference there that you'd, you'd known about this for some time. And, you know, today's kind of the confirmation of it, not just obviously to the, the public and the media, but to yourself as well that, you know, the fight is actually happening. So. Well, uh, my manager, advisor, friend, Daniel, uh, told me from a few weeks ago, Listen, this could be done, but I don't want to tell you that it's done till it's done. So we're kind of on an knife edge every time, and he just kept telling me to just remain positive and keep training, keep focusing like it's done, but don't get uh, yourself too hyped up for it. But now, finally, it's here, and um, I just can't wait to go on there. To be fair, if your advisor says it's done, it usually means it's done. Yeah, well, when he said <laughs> he was giving me percentages as the week's going on, and when he said it was done, and uh, he says he's confident. When he said he was confident, I knew I was done there. Because uh, no one can say no to him. Jerwin Ankarhas. Is that how you pronounce his name? I couldn't tell you. Well, we're going to roll with we'll that. We'll go with that one. Yeah, yeah. Sounds nice. Uh, the IBF world title. We saw him in action on the undercard and he was there uh, of Manny Pacquiao uh, losing to Jeff Horn. And he was very impressive that night, wasn't he? Very, very impressive. And um, a state that is like, not kind of... The, the lads are well the European scene and British scene would not be familiar with you know that kind of Asian and it's like um, very light on their feet and they're in and out and um, southpaw is like the kind of one that you probably wouldn't have want but when I sat down with him with my dad with, with Danny Vaughan with, with Daniel and we've looked at him we've looked at different ways and just I feel so confident very confident I know in my whole heart that I can beat this guy and, but I do know that it will be a really tough ask and that it's going to be require the best Jimmy coming on the night to beat him mm. Yeah I mean you said it yourself this is going to be a tough fight but the fact that you have it in Belfast is, is a plus point for you in itself Yeah, well, I don't think even even in Brisbane at his, the stage he was fighting it it was it was pretty packed but it wasn't loud it got loud when Pacquiao was fighting it got loud when, when um, well, it was loud when the Irish were in as well but for his fight, I don't think he's ever going to, he's ever experienced what he's going to experience when he comes to it. He's going to be like a cauldron. And um, he's a very nice guy. I've met him. He seemed like a really nice guy, really humble guy, really nice, um, nice way about him. But I won't stand him too well. He doesn't seem like he had that kind of like bad guy about him to be in this kind of place. Because uh, one thing about the, the Belfast crowd, they get behind their own. They also understand a good fighter. They will understand he's a good fighter, and they will, they will understand their meaning. What they will mean to me to, to pick me up and get, add that wee extra five percent on the night. Um, obviously, Carl Frampton um, will return to Belfast after you know the the goings on of what happened uh, recently uh, in Belfast, which Carl you know quickly wants to put to bed. But him joining MTK uh, and also. Like I said, returning to Belfast is, is, is good for Belcar Belfast and good for MTK as well. It's fantastic, you know, the amount of boxers MTK have from Ireland that are going to get going to get a wage out of this, you know what I mean? Everyone is going to get working and not much big shows have been coming to Belfast in the pre past few years since Carr kind of had, since I was took abroad and, and brought the USA and, and went to Vegas and all that. So we're kind of starved now. Burnett is with Matchroom, Car with BT Sport and Frank Warren, and, and it's buzzing. You know, everyone who's here are grinding out on wee small hall shows it's in front of 500, 600 people, aren't getting the recognition that they deserve, and no one gets to really see them. Um, but now they're all going to get seen. They all have their chance to, to perform and shine and, and earn a few few quid for, for themselves and for their families. It's fantastic. It's, it's brilliant for everyone. Everyone should be very pleased that he's went with Frank because he's going to put the big shows on. You know, Windsor Park is going to be huge. It's going to be filled with all the lads of MTK and, and, and guys here are willing to put, put their records on the line and put, their, put themselves out there to perform. Did uh, Carl speak to you and your brother uh, about any sort of advice before joining MTK? Uh, 
he spoke to myself and Paddy and a few others, yes. Yeah. So, um, oh, I, and of course Paddy, Paddy yeah. Uh, um, and if you could speak to any boxer and even really are connected or not connected to the MTK and you wouldn't find anyone to say a bad word. They, they go above and beyond for the fighters, you know. They, they understand what a boxer... Um, puts himself through on a daily basis and, and the kind of rewards that he gets does not outweigh the, the, the work that he actually puts in. You know, they, 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 they break their back for their fighters and I couldn't speak very I couldn't speak highly enough about the lads and, and obviously once he sat down and met them and got talking to them he seen what I was trying to tell him. You know, you, you always think there's a catch but with these boys there's no catch. They they are one hundred percent genuine for their fighters. An ever growing stable. The, the best, the biggest in Europe, I would, I would assume. I don't know who's if all him and his bigger in America, but uh, they're taking over and um, they're growing and growing. It every day. I don't think people realise uh, uh, the magnitude of what Carl brings to Belfast and what brings the Ireland and the, the get a signing of his level is it, it, fantastic. You know, we have world, they have world champions, Olympians. The, it, like champions at every level, British Commonwealth, you know, lower level, they, but they still put in the same work for the guy doing a six rounder on a t, uh, non TV show in London than they'll put in for Carl Frampton Frank fighting in front of 10,000 people and um, across the world on, on BT Sport. I want to talk about your brother, obviously, a, a stunning win uh, in Arizona uh, last week. Um, yeah, uh, what, what did you make of it? He's, ticking along very nicely yeah, at the moment, Michael. He's, he's ticking the boxes, there's still obviously, he's no, nowhere near the finished article, but the thing with Top Rank is it's, they, they put a different task every time in front of him, and uh, this time it was an undefeated fighter, a guy finally who came to kindly to, to win the fight, to push him, and that's where you're going to see Mick at his very best, when people actually come to fight him and come to kind of mix with him and actually in competitive competitive enough fights, um, he'll look exceptional because you know, I've seen him in the gym of world champions and when you're actually watching the spa you're thinking he's the world champion and not the guy only with two and three feats and when you're speaking to the world champions after the spar, they're very disheartened because they are getting outworked, getting out, out schooled and getting out punched by um, a three, three feet for nine, four feet novice so uh, it's it's a long road in front of him um, but it's a road that he's more than willing for and more than ready for. He's never stopping learning. And even in that one, he was he was getting different kind of nerves that he had previously. And it was great there to, for him to fight in front of the Mexican kind of audience. And they seemed to take him to him very well with his style there. He got to sit down. He was actually showing he was sitting down more on his shots. And uh, it, a walk-off knockout, you know, it was fantastic. A great shot. It was coming for a while. and then. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Mm. And I'm assuming that it's not going to be too long before we see yourself, Michael, Paddy, and Carl on the same card. Well, that would be kind of. It's going to come though. Three yeah, of you can to, be yeah. on one card. Yeah, you and, know, and, and, um, I'm sure that the addition of your brother isn't no, going to be too impossible. We're all with the same management company, so it's not um, out of the question, not a chance. And um, with with a card like that, you know, you've got to. Former world champion, I believe he will be world champion again. And myself should be world champion by this stage. Paddy should be challenging for a world title around that time. And then you have, in my opinion, the, the most talented and best fighter to come out of this, this country. And Mick, and he was a future world champion, future multiple weight world champion, as he keeps telling me. But uh, that car will be fantastic. And an outdoor arena such as Windsor Park, you know, it, it'd be very fitting for it, you know. Mm. Uh, MTK have the best fighters in Ireland and they'll put the best show on in Ireland. Okay, uh, Jamie Conlon, uh, thank you very much for to Eiffel TV. Congratulations on getting your shot, very pleased for you. Cheers, cooks. And uh, yeah, anything else you'd like to add? Are you not going to comment on my suit, no? Well, yeah, I know, but I don't want to rib it because you look sharp, but you I look do. like you're either going to. You know, wedding crashes, you seen that film? Yes. You yeah. and Paddy could do that easily. <laughs> show people. Yeah. No, but me and Paddy are probably the mistake is for communion crashes, you know. We're, we're, not, we're not tall enough to be wedding crashes or old looking enough to be wedding crashes, but uh, I, I do think that I was the, the standout on the table today, you know. It was, 
Chris Suter is the, is the man. Okay, Suter bring Bruce. this out. Yep. No problem. He does the whole lot of us. So All right, if they want to send so. me and James Helder a couple, you know, we'll, we'll plug what it says, What says are you? What, about six fours? Easy, six two, easy, and then... easy, <laughs> easy, easy, James. Well, you're Helder. looking well. Yeah. You're getting slimmer as the I'm days trying. go on. I'm trying to make cruiser, aren't I? I'm going to fight Ferdinand. <laughs> the Sri Lankan assassin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> against Rio Ferdinand. Yeah, yeah why fantastic. Not? Why not? Jamie Collin, thank you very much for all Typhoon TV and uh, we'll definitely catch up with you ahead of November the 18th. Brilliant Best Cruise. of luck. Cheers, man. All right.